Welcome to the lecture of data science. In this video lecture, we will start with unit number three, that is introduction to probability. And in this video lecture, we will cover the topic such as introduction to probability and the probability theory terminologies. So let's get started. So first of all, introduction to probability. So over here, there are two types of events that is the certain events and the uncertain events. So many important tasks in the analytics are deal with the uncertain events. So it is essential to understand the probability theory that what will be the probability of a particular event in the near future. So the best example of the probability is a tossing a coin. So after tossing a coin, whether the head will appear or the tail will appear. So we have to find out the probability related to it. Now we will study over here. That is the probability terminologies. So in this section, we will be discussing various terminologies uh, that are used in the probability theory, such as the first one as the random experiment, the second one as the sample space, third one as the event, fourth one as the probability estimation using relative frequency, and the last one as the algebra of events. So the first one, that is the random experiment. So we will study all this five turn by turn. So starting with the first one, that is the random experiment. So random experiment in which the outcome is not known with certainty. So what are called as the random experiment? This is the definition. The definition is quite uh, complex to understand. So let's simplify it with the help of the example. So over here, the example is that is the predicting quarterly revenue of an organization, whether in terms of the rupees or the dollars. Then comes the customer churn. Now you have to understand this uh, concept of the customer churn because this customer churn uh, will be the example of a various topic. So what is the customer churn? It is the loss of the clients or the customers. Suppose I take the example of the Paytm. At this point, suppose the Paytm is having one lakh users. One lakh users, the customers who are using Paytm as an application to recharge, uh, to do the recharge of the mobile phone or to do the uh, recharge of the uh, disk TV. So over here at this point, the number of users of the Paytm is one lakh. Now after three months or after four months, now the number of user has decreased and it is now only 70,000 out of the uh, one lakh. So the Paytm has uh, lost 30,000 customers. So what that 30,000 is, that 30,000 means the customer churn. The Paytm has lost their customers. How many customers they have lost? They have lost 30,000 customers. It means the customer churn in the Paytm has occurred. So it is based on the uh, customer dissatisfaction that you can find out from the rating of the application. So the customer who are giving the rating as only one star to that uh, application, uh, it means the customer is dissatisfied with the application. So surely that customer will move to some other application. So uh, other examples of the random experiments are demand of a product in future the number of views for a YouTube video and the outcome of a football match, whether the football match will be a win, draw or a loss. So this all are the example of the random experiment. Now let's understand the definition again. So what is the random experiment? It is an experiment in which the outcome is not known with certainty. So we are not knowing that in a football match, whether a team will win or whether uh, the, the team will lose the match or the match will be a draw. Also, uh, whatever the 
application ratings are so based on the ratings uh, we can't predict the future that the whether the customer will like the application or whether the customer will be dissatisfied from the application so the outcome whatever the outcome is that is the final result that is not known with the certainty that are called as the random experiment now let's understand the next one that is the sample space so what is the sample space sample space is a universal set that consists of all possible outcomes of an experiment so we have to focus on this whatever the possible outcomes are there that we have to mention over here in a set so that complete set will be represented as my capital letter s so let's understand this definition with the help of the example so this is the example that is outcome of a football match these are all the possible outcomes of a football match so either a team will win or the team will loss or the match will be a draw match so this complete set is called my sample space that is represented with capital s and the individual element within the set is called as the elementary events so this sample space is a set uh, which contains the different elementary events so out of this from apart from this there are no possible outcome so for a football match there are only this three possible outcomes the fourth outcome is not possible for a football match now let's understand the other examples of the sample space that is predicting a customer churn at an individual customer level so if i consider an individual customer level then the only two possible outcomes are there there whether a customer will move or whether the customer will not move so in the sample space the two possible outcomes are the churn and the no churn so whether the customer will move or whether the customer will not move if i consider the customer churn at an organization level then it has the sample space like this the sample space consists of the letter capital x where x is a real number and whose value will range between 0 to 100 so if i take the customer churn at an organization level then in an organization they will find out that how many percentage of the customer churn has taken place so they will uh, not consider the total numbers they will consider in terms of the percentage that 30% of the customer churn is there or 40% of the customer churn is there so how many percentage of the customers or the clients they have lost so these are the examples that is from pdm they are supposed moving to the free charge so it is based on the customer satisfactions how the customers are happy or the set another example of the sample space that is the life of a turbine blade in an aircraft engine so this is a turbine blade so its life uh, it is given like this in a sample space uh, in sample space it consists of the variable x where x is a real number and whose values lies between 0 to infinite so this uh, turbine blade uh, will work uh, as per the uh, lifetime of the aircraft or it may have to change due to some technical issues so its lifetime is uh, given like this so this is the complete set that is all possible outcome of a turbine blade that is the lifetime of a turbine blade next comes that is the event so what is an event event is the subset of the sample so from the venn diagram you can observe that this is my sample space s what is population what is sample that we have already seen so this is my sample space s and this is my event e so this event e is the subset of sample space so let's take the example of the event so we are taking the example of the customer churn again so considering a random experiment and taking the customer base as the 100 customers so what we are assuming over here that suppose we have the total number of the customer as the 100 so the sample space it is given like this that is from 0 to 100 where x belongs to z 
now this x consists of some integer values that is from 0 to uh, 100 so x or z indicates the uh, set of the integer numbers now that was the sample space now we have to uh, define over here the event so what is event it is the subset of the sample so over here i have defined three different events that is my event a b and c so the number of a customer churn less than 10 if the number of customer churn is less than 10 then i have taken the event as a the number of customer churn if it is between 10 to 30 then i have taken as the event b and if the uh, number of customer churn is uh, exceeding 30 then i have taken the event as c now next one is the probability estimation using the relative frequency so over here uh, it is again based on the event that is your event so based on that you can calculate the probability so suppose x is my event and i want to calculate the probability of each and every event so in the previous example how many events we have we have three different events then what is the probability of event a b and c we can find out that with the help of the probability estimation using the relative frequency so over here the formula general formula is like this that is probability of the event x is equals to number of observations in the favor of event x divided by total number of observations so let's understand this with the help of the example say for an example the company has thousand employees and every year 200 employees leave the job then what is the probability of the attrition attrition means the employees is leaving the job so they are taking the probability they want to find out the probability of attrition so how many employees leave the job that is the 200 divided by total number of observations so over here the total number of observations that is 1000 over here so i got the probability as 0.2 so in a year the probability of the employees uh, who will leave the job that is 0.2 now next one is the algebra of events so assume that the x y and z are the three events of the sample space then the following algebraic relationships are valid and are useful while deriving the probability of the events so you all know these rules that is the commutative rule associative rule and the distributive rule so x union y equals to uh, y union x distributive rule and the associative rule you have already studied in your mathematics also the following de morgan's law uh, on complementary sets are useful for deriving the probabilities so suppose over here x union y the whole complement is equals to x complement intersection y complement so what the x raised to c and y raised to c over here these are the complementary events of the x and y respectively now let's understand the numerical based on this probability terminology so this is my example 3.1 uh, it's very easy so let's understand this so first of all what the question is let's see that a website displays 10 advertisement so there is one website and in website there are 10 different advertisement and the revenue generated by the website depends on the number of visitors to the site clicking on any of the advertisement displayed on the website so how the developers of the website is earning they are generating the revenue based on the number of clicks that is made by the visitors so the data collected by the company has revealed that out of 2500 visitors 30 visitors click on one advertisement 15 visitors are clicking on two different advertisements and the five uh, visitors are clicking on three advertisement so whatever the remaining customers are the remaining did not uh, click on any of the advertisement so you have to calculate the probability that a visitor uh, to the website will click on an advertisement the probability that a visitor will click on at least two advertisements 
and the probability that a visitor will not click on any advertisement. So let's start with the first one. So you have uh, some data set and this data set contains the values like this. So that values uh, that observations are already given to you in some of the statements. So over here, the first one, that is the probability that a visitor to the website will click on an advertisement. On an advertisement means the visitor will click on at least one advertisement. So for at least one advertisement, you have to consider this particular one that is 30 visitors click on the one advertisement so over here the 15 visitors are clicking on the two advertisement so this if the visitor is clicking on the one at ad two advertisement then it means it also click on at least one advertisement so let's see over here that is the number of customers clicking an advertisement is 50 how this number 50 came it came from here that is the 30 visitors plus 15 plus 5 that is 30 plus 15 is 45 45 plus 5 is 50 so total number of visitors who are clicking on at least at least means wo koi bhi ek advertisement pe to click karega hi karega to aise kitne visitors hai aise hai 50 to wo humne yahan se calculate kar liye theek hai to ye ho gaya hamara 50 divided by 2500 so what you have find out the relative frequency the probability related to the uh, relative frequency that is the 50 divided by total number of visitors so total number of visitors are 2500 so you are getting the probability as 0.02 so aapke data set mein kitne customers hai jisne at least uh, one advertisement per click kiya hai so, uski probability uh, kitni aai 0.02. The second one is the number of customers clicking on at least two advertisement. So, we have to find out the probability of the visitors will click on at least two advertisement. So, at least means minimum do to hona hi chahiye. Maximum kitna bhi ho to wo chalega. So, hum yaha pe kya karenge? 15 plus 5. So, how many total number of visitors are there? That is the 15 plus 5 done so we are doing over here that is 20 divided by total number of observations that is 2500 so i am getting the probability like this that is the probability that a visitor will click on at least two advertisement is 0 0.008 the third one is the probability that a visitor will not click on any any advertisement it means these are the visitors who are clicking on the ad advertisement. The visitors who are not clicking on the advertisement. What is that numbers? The number is like this. That is 50. This total is 50. 30 plus 15 plus 5. That is 50. So 2500 minus 50. So the answer is 2450. So this 2450 customers are not clicking on any advertisement. So we uh, got this figure do it just uh, divide by the total number of observations and you are getting this probability that is 0 0.98 so what is all about the probability is so from this video you can answer such questions such as give a give a brief introduction about the probability theory and write a brief note on a probability theory and terminology thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.